And uh, this is the item that was requested to be pulled by Ms. Brown. Ms. Brown, would you care to open on this item? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I just want to say I received uh, multiple requests from members of the public to pull this item from the agenda today and agreed to do so. Uh, the item is uh, approval of the Santa Cruz Police Officers Association and Police Management Association um, contracts, uh, labor contracts, and uh, the, the requests that I received included concerns related to specific, um, I think it was primarily related to specific positions and uh, the vehicle abatement position in particular in the uh, police budget. And while that is not something that we can necessarily discuss um, here because it's not within the scope of our labor negotiations, I wanted to give an opportunity for uh, folks who made this request to speak about their concerns before we take a vote. Thank you. Anyone with us today who wishes to make such comments on item 10? Good, after Good afternoon. Hmm. My name is Leanne Sherwood, and my father was the pastor, uh, associate pastor of the Circle Church from 69 to 85, and I know he would approve this message. This is for the Santa Cruz Police Department and Santa Cruz City Council. This is for all backyard meters and burn beaters, bum beaters. A sociopath will stand there and watch watch you cry over the pain that they have caused you with a glint in their eye, a smirk in their face, no remorse, no apology, and they will keep winding you up and mock you for crying. Shame on you. Anyone else on item 10? Good afternoon. Hi. Um... My name is Reggie Meisler. I'm a member of Santa Cruz Cares. I work in a coalition with a large number of other groups to defend the rights of people who live in vehicles and tents. Um, we have a request for you uh, regarding the Santa Cruz Police Labor Contract, uh, namely that you either reject the MOU to make changes to it or you amend the MOU to remove the vehicle abatement officer position and the vehicle abatement hotline from the Santa Cruz Police Force. I'll talk a little bit about why this is a deeply problematic role and speed dial number for our police. But let me first address this in a wider context. People need housing. They need housing they can afford, and they need a lot of it at this point. They can't wait 10, 20, or 50 years from now for housing to become available. More people are living in their vehicles and tents every year, and so there's a desperate need for people to simply be allowed to exist while our government attempts to address a multi-million unit deficit of affordable housing throughout the state. That is what this is really about. People need a way to exist while they're poor. We need a bottom to this capitalist system that is currently creating a downward spiral of suffering. You lose your job, you lose your apartment, you lose your vehicle, you lose your tent, and then you lose your life. <sighs> We need a bottom to this system because the way things are working right now, people are led to death. They're led to death by exposure or death by suicide. So with that in mind, let's talk about why the vehicle abatement officer and the abatement hotline are perpetuating that downward spiral. For those who don't know, the vehicle abatement officer is a role in the Santa Cruz Police Department dedicated to handing out 72-hour tow notices also known as abandoned vehicle notices or green tags to nuisance vehicles for a wide range of community complaints, including complaints which are purely subjective and aesthetic, like general unsightliness. Complaints by neighbors sent to the SCPD are not investigated before a tow notice is given, and reporters are not required to provide personal information, meaning complainants cannot even be held accountable for false police reports of an abandoned vehicle. As you might imagine, then, unfair reporting and abuse in this system is rampant and normalized. Groups like Santa Cruz Neighbors are very public about their intention to use this vehicle abatement hotline liberally. 
uh, not simply to address public health and safety concerns, but also to address what they consider to be blight in their respective neighborhoods. The biggest target for this program is our neighbors most vulnerable to tow orders, people living out of their vehicles. I've heard numerous stories of the system being used to unfairly target and harass people for simply having an unsightly vehicle, people getting green tags within hours or minutes of parking, people getting green tags while actively occupying their vehicles, officers cracking someone's windshield when they place a green tag on their vehicle, officers telling people, move one mile, and aggressively chalking that message onto their tires when the law they're citing only requires they move a short distance, which is not actually defined. The ACLU recently sent you a letter, which I uh, was supposed to give you a physical copy of. I'll send it to you again uh, via email. And that letter details how green tags, what the vehicle abatement officer gives out, is neither lawful nor enforceable. So why continue to support a program that is discriminatory, abusive, unlawful, and unenforceable? Amend the MOU or reject it to erase the shameful role from our city police force and stop the downward spiral while we await for truly affordable housing to be built. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Greg Bankson, uh, registered voter. Um, I'm a resident up at the Armory right now, and um, I hope we have more room to get people in. Basically, I believe that you know the politicians need to have their feet held to the fire or just warmed at the fire. But the police, uh, you know, I think we're I think we're lucky to have the cops that we do have. Um, I've been in Chicago. I've been thrown 40 feet by two cops, and um, these guys do a pretty damn good job of letting us be foolish. And um, and uh, I asked them one day, I was like, or they said, well, this is what we signed up for. And then I chased them down, and I said, you signed up to babysit 50-year-old drunken men like me that are, well, I'm older, but, and uh, that do no better? And they're like, well... And they, sh you know, they shouldn't have to do that. But I've been sober for 14, 15 days, and but I'm still mischievous. But um, we need to, like I said, at the Benchlands, I was co-chairman of the Benchlands Council, um, which means I was the only person that did anything or showed up anymore. But that's mischief, too. Uh, let's keep the focus on the origins of, of uh, what's causing things, you know. And we could... You know, those 70 outdoor beds do not really count according to Boise versus Wade, and we could flip a lawsuit if we needed to, but um, there's other ways to get stuff done. And it, the most important thing is let's remember, you know, the multiple people that have died out on the streets, mostly from drugs, but um, it's not easy to get the cleanness over out there. Let's make things good for them. Let's keep, uh, keep us safe. Let's let the cops go home to their families and um, let the politicians go home to their families. And um, and I will and can stay there. No, no, no. We need them to do stuff until I get to office. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ms. Smith, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you're all here receiving. And the rain led up and the horrible rain, I mean the wind, but people from Chicago are used to it. And I... Um, I've lived in Santa Cruz for 53 years, staunch Democrat. Why I'm here, I um, am concerned when, well, tell Public Works to get in gear. I'm waiting, as many people are, for the fencing around duck, the duck pond to be removed. And there are still lights that are out on the walkway. And... Uh, the, for those of us who love to walk to the park and through the park in downtown to get to TJ's. And as Sandy knows, I told her I wish that I could get a little commission once a year. I live near the riverbank and I walk a lot and constantly picking up trash and thought of <laughs> mentioning it since, lo and behold, trash to pick up on my way here. And beyond that, Mayor Keeley, I left a telephone message for you that I presume you received, if not, about a brilliant book I want to give you. I'd like to pass on 
brilliant books. I said, who can I, who really would love and deserve this besides uh, supervisors? Um, Golden Gates, The Housing Crisis, and A Reckoning for the American Dream by Connor Doherty. And it's, it, it's historical and sociological, and it'll inspire you all, but for the mayor to take it home and eat it up and read it all up and uh, use it for future. Ms. Smith, here's it's what I'll do. focuses on San Francisco. Here's what I'll do. I have a policy about not receiving gifts, but you can... Well, it's not but, a gift. It's a but, but, citizen input. But <laughs> you can... You can gift that to the city of Santa Cruz, and any of us can read it. So if you would give that to the city clerk, that would be great. Of course. Sir. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Buell, how are you? Thank you. I'm good. Um, I just wanted to take a quick minute to echo what Reggie Meisler said. Um, as many of you know, I spent four years living in my RV, those tickets, the green stickers, they do nothing to help individuals get housing. In fact, it hurt my family quite a bit. The resentment is still very much in my heart about that whole situation. Um, the money that's spent on tickets could be saved to help people get housing. Um, I spent a lot of money on tickets that could have been used on food for my family, um, could have been used on a lot of other things. So I do want to echo what Reggie said as the truth. Um, he said a lot of truths that pertain to the unhoused community and people living in their vehicles. And so I think that, again, I will say, the focus needs to be on services and not criminalization. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kirk. Good afternoon. Sir. I'm not sure whether I used up my time. It was kicked off the agenda, the the, uh, the memo of understanding with the, the police. But this concerns the issue that people have been talking about, about parking. So it's very, very short. Okay. okay. So uh, I've been, I think, pretty uh, liberal in uh, allowing people to speak to number 10 without speaking to number 10, so... Well, this is exactly about the issue of... I'll tell you what, well, you, you use your time as you wish. Your time okay, starts thank you, now. Okay, thank you, Mayor Keeley. Keeley. Um, in case anybody has a problem with a Santa Cruz parking ticket, I know a legal way to challenge it and win. I've known this for years. I'm not going to reveal the secret here in front of Council and Tony. <laughs> but... Uh, it's very effective, and I've done all of thorough legal research on it. So uh, part of the process of the parking tickets uh, is unconstitutional under um, a decision by the California Supreme Court. So that's all I'm going to say. If you want to talk to me and get in touch with me, anybody can. And my, if you can find the yellow sheet, that's got all my contact information on it. love to help somebody out. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. Mr. Norse, good afternoon. And uh, hello to the community and the city council. Um, in these chambers, we are c constrained to wedge our groans of pain and shouts of outrage into a two-minute slot. Uh, adding insult to injury, oral communication has been denied its traditional spot today at a time certain, so most people might, don't even know when to come and speak, unless I've been misinformed. Any MOU, which is what we're talking about on this, in this period, must, of course, severely cut police funding, if not shift it entirely to real community organizations that provide actual services for Santa Cruz. Ask how many times a police officer has helped you in the last five years. <laughs> Ask yourself that question. I mean, honestly, uh, not do it with any disrespect to individuals who get their salary that way. Police murders and militarization in other places, lack of accountability here, and police collusion with DAs and business interests plagues us. Should more money be spent on funding these armed goon squads that forced hungry and homeless people to eat in the rain in the past week, right outside these chambers it happened on Friday? Should we bolster the weaponry of uniformed gunmen who drove community members away from here, the seat of government, because they were setting up food under the eaves so that people would not be rained on? Do we continue to ignore voices that point to increasing discrimination against black and Latino residents in San Francisco and San Jose and has also been documented here 
with dangerous and life-threatening traffic stops. Documentation is shown in San Francisco and San Jose. These stops threaten minority folks two to six times as heavily as us privileged white folks. Is this the truth? And this issue, what, what does this have to do with memorandum of understanding? Well, this is a, this is a pay raise. And when, when it's hard to oppose a pay raise to our employees of any kind, but when you have individuals who are violating people's rights without accountability, one has to put that into a real examination before one raises their salaries and commends them for the good work. I mean no disrespect to any human being here or in the broader water-soaked community. But as a matter of principle, it's important to preserve our First Amendment rights by not being afraid to show disdain and outrage for a local government and a local mayor, amiable as he may be, who has refused to open broader shelter for this winter, but most outrageously for this series of storms coming up. They may be drenched, shivering, with the only warming center accessible to all on those few nights to be open closed. The current depot center is a joke. The other centers are too far from town, a stated capacity of less than 30 at depot, an actual capacity of less than 60. Meanwhile, across the street, the Civic Auditorium lies empty and guarded by the promise of violent force should anyone attempt to escape the atmospheric flood there. It should not be tolerated. Thank you, Mr. Lord. Anyone else who is with us who wishes to comment on item number 10? Seen and hearing none, the matter is back before the council. A motion is in order. Ms. Brown? I will move the item. The item's been moved. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Kalantari Johnston. Is there debate or discussion on the item? Ms. Brown? I would like to make a few remarks, uh, given that I pulled this item and have been in communication with some of you who are here today. <clears throat> um, so I just want to say that I, I share... Uh, your concerns that have been expressed, and I'm going to try to speak just to this item here, um, but I just want to generally say I share the concerns that uh, you all are expressing. I have consistently uh, expressed concern and opposed uh, efforts that are enforcement-based approaches to addressing our homelessness crisis in our community. Um, what people are going through is um, obviously, you know, really unconscionable. Um, and I'm not saying that to place blame anywhere in this room. Um, we have some major challenges to, to try to work through. And, um, and I think that um, trying to work on those changes in the context of a labor contract uh, with the people who do this work, um, who go out every day, and, um, you know, you know I, I think that that's important that we support our workers. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of leave it there. I guess I could say more, but um, this is a workforce issue as well, and as uh, management here that, as I am, I think it's really important that we support our workforce. Um, and this is an a MOU that was negotiated in good faith. Um, but I do take your concerns seriously um, and we'll continue to work on them elsewhere, elsewise. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Others on this item? Please call the roll. Councilmember Newsom? Aye. Brown? Aye. Watkins? Aye. Bruner? Aye. Helen Tari Johnson? Aye. Vice Mayor Golder? Aye. And Mayor Keeley? Aye. Consent agenda and additional item 10, or item 10 rather, are approved as submitted.